Descriptions of Hajj The one who comes with the intention of performing Hajj either performs Hajj Tamattu' Tiran or Ifrat. The one performing Tamattu' leaves his state of Ihram after performing Umrah. Those performing Tiran and Ifrat continue in their state of Ihram. And they all start the actions of Hajj on the 8th of the Hijjah and continue until the end of the 13th day. The following are the actions that should be performed by the one making Hajj, taking one day at a time. The 8th day of the month of the Hijjah. This day is called Yawm at tarwiyah or the day of quenching. Because those performing Hajj used to bring with them all the water that they needed for Mina and Arafah since these areas did not contain any water. On the 8th of Dhul Hijjah, the pilgrim assumes ihram for Hajj and it is recommended for him to assume ihram before Dhuhr. He assumes ihram from the place he is staying. So if he is staying in Mecca, he should assume ihram there and if he is in Mina, he should assume ihram from that area. So he takes the ritual bath and puts on perfume and wears the ihram garment. Then he says, لَبَّيْكَ أَلَّهُمَّ حَجًّا لَبَّيْكَ أَلَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ وَالنِّعْمَةَ لَكَ وَالْمُلْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ The meaning of which is, I am here at your service, O Allah. I am here at your service. You have no partner. Surely all praise and blessings are yours. And also all sovereignty. You have no partner. And it is recommended to say the Tilbiya often. Then he heads to Mina and observes Zuhr, Asr, Maghrib and Isha prayers as well as the Fajr prayer of the following day, all in Mina. Observing each Salah at its prescribed time but shortening the four Raka'ah prayers to just two. He stays in Mina until sunrise on the ninth day which is the day of Arafah, the ninth day of the month of the Hijjah, Yawm Arafah. After sunrise, the pilgrims head to Arafah while saying the Talbiyah. It is recommended that he goes to Namira and stays there until the sun starts to pass its meridian, if that is possible for him. Namira is situated just before Arafah on its border. When the sun has passed its meridian and the time of Dhuhr has started, it is sunnah for the Imam of the Muslims or his deputy to give a khutbah to the Hujjaj, meaning the pilgrims, and its singular is Hajj. This khutbah should be one that fits the occasion, stressing on the importance of Tawheed or monotheism and teaching them the principles of Hajj and the important issues related to their religion. Subsequently, he performs Dhuhr and Asr prayers, Jama' al-Taqdeem or together in advance and also shortens them. It is permissible for the Hajj or pilgrim to go straight to Arafah without stopping at Namirah. Al-Wuquf bi-Arafah or standing on Arafah. The meaning of standing at Arafah is for the Hajj to be present at Arafah on the ninth day of the Hijjah whether standing, sitting, lying or riding. And it does not mean one has to literally stand. Al-Wuquf bi-Arafah is one of the pillars of Hajj without which Hajj is invalid. If the Wuquf is missed, one has missed all of the Hajj. Because the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Hajj is Arafah. The starting time for the Wukuf is at dawn of the ninth day and it continues until the dawn of the tenth day of the Hijjah. If the Hajj is present at Arafah at this time, even for a moment, and he has fulfilled all the conditions of the Wukuf, then his Hajj is correct. If, on the other hand, he is not present at any time during this period, then his Hajj is invalid. As Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated in a marfu' or elevated hadith, one who is present on Arafah before Fajr, then his hajj is fulfilled. Concerning the place one should perform the wuquf or the standing, it is permissible to perform the wuquf in any place as long as it is within the area of Arafah. The Prophet stopped at Mount Arafah, close to the rocks facing the Qibla, and he did not climb it. He, peace and blessings be upon him, said, I have stopped here, and the whole of Arafah is a stopping place for the day of Arafah. If it is easy for the Hajj to stop at the place where the Messenger of Allah stopped, then it is better, otherwise he may perform his wukuf anywhere on Arafah. 
He cannot, however, stop in the valley ahead of Arafah, named the valley of Qurana. No climb the mountain, no climb on its rocks. Arafah has its known boundaries, and from the olden times, signs have been placed to designate these boundaries. Nowadays, new large and very clear ones have been erected, clearly showing the borders from all directions. What a Hajj does when standing on Arafah. It is prescribed for the Hajj on this day to face the Qibla, supplicating to Allah as much and as diligently as he can. In that supplication, he should show his submission to Allah Almighty, as well as his weakness and dire need of him. He should insist on and persist in repeating supplications. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, The best supplication is that done on the day of Arafah. And the best supplication said by me and the Prophet before me is, There is no God but Allah alone. He has no partner. To Allah is the dominion. And to him is all praise. And he is capable of all things. The Hajj should be keen to make dua using authentically reported supplication. And avoid those which are innovated and fictitious. If he reads something from the Qur'an, then this is good. And he should also send his salahs and salams, meaning the prayers and salutations on the Prophet, may the peace and blessings of Allah Almighty be upon him. The Hajj has to bear in mind the greatness of this day and its virtue, and that Allah is very generous to his slaves on this day. He boasts about them before his angels, and frees many of his slaves from the hellfire on this day. The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, There is no day on which Allah frees people from the hellfire more than on the day of Arafah. He comes close to those, meaning the people standing on Arafah, and then he boasts about them before his angels, asking, What are these people seeking? So the Hajj should take this opportunity to make use of every minute of this holy day and renew repentance and take stock of himself. He should not waste his time in roaming around, or in being busy with idle talk and controversies, leaving Arafah. The Hajj leaves Arafah after sunset, heading towards Muzdalifah, and it is not permissible to leave before sunset. If he leaves before sunset, he must return to it, even if it is night time. If he did not return, he has to make up for this by paying a fidya, or a ransom, as compensation. This fidya is in the form of a sheep, or a servant, of a camel or a seventh of a cup. The eve of the tenth, leaving to Muzdalifah and staying there overnight. The Hajj leaves Arafah after sunset, heading towards Muzdalifah, and it is sunnah for the Hajj to leave calmly and with his dignity, so as not to offend people and to make talbiyah to Allah Almighty. When the Hajj reaches Muzdalifah, he should begin by performing Maghrib and Isha Salah together, shortening Isha Salah before taking his luggage and belongings from the passenger vehicle. The ruling of staying overnight in Muzdalifah. The Hajj must stay overnight in Muzdalifah on the eve of the 10th of Dhul Hijjah and perform Fajr Salah early. He must not start moving from Muzdalifah before Fajr, except if he has an excuse, such as being a weak female or young boy or those accompanying them, or those who serve the Hujjaj. For them, it is permissible to leave Muzdalifah at the end of the night when the moon has set. What a Hajj does in Muzdalifah. After the Hajj performs Fajr, it is desirable that he comes to the Mash'ar al-Haram, or the sacred site or monument, and facing the Qibla, make much dhikr or remembrance of Allah, takbir and supplications raising his hands up in a sincere manner, beseeching him. The Hajj should continue to do this until the sun shines, which means that the morning light has spread across the land. And anyway he stops to do this in Wuzdalifah is acceptable, due to the saying of the Prophet, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And I stop here and everywhere in the area of Jama'ah. It's permissible to stop. Jama'ah here means Wuzdalifah. When a Hajj leaves Buzdalifa, it is advisable for him to pick up seven pebbles to throw at the Jamarat of the first day only, while for the rest of the days he takes their pebbles from Mina. It is permissible, however, to pick up pebbles from anywhere. The tenth day of Dhul Hijjah, Eid day. 
The Hajj leaves Muzdalifah before sunrise, moving towards Mina. He should make much talbiya on the way when he reaches the valley of Muhassir, which is a valley before Mina, between Mina and Muzdalifah, he should move faster. When he reaches Mina, he carries out the actions of the Eid day, which are in brief. The stoning of Jamratul Aqaba, slaughtering an animal, shaving or trimming the hair, Tawaf and Sa'i. The following describes each of these. Stoning Jamratul Aqaba. It is the first thing one does on Eid Day. When he arrives at Mina, he goes to Jamratul Aqaba, which is the furthest Jamra from the center of Mina, and the nearest one to Mecca. So when he reaches it, he stops saying Talbiyah and stones the Jamra with seven pebbles, one after the other, saying Allahu Akbar with every throw. The desirable time for stoning starts at Fajr, the day of Eid, but it is correct and acceptable to stone before Fajr at the end of the night. The stoning time continues until Fajr on the 11th day. Guidelines A Muslim should avoid harming his hujjaj brothers when pelting the jamarat and during the performance of the rest of the hajj rites. The hajj must make sure that the pebble he throws falls into the basin. For some people make a mistake and think that stoning should be aimed at the pillar and then the pebble does not fall into the basin. Others aim from a distance and so the pebbles also do not fall into the basin. Such people do not perform the duty of stoning. The Muslim must avoid going to extremes when stoning. For example, he must not throw a large stone or shoes. It is recommended that the size of the pebble should be slightly larger than a chickpea. If the Hajj throws all the pebbles at once, it does not count as anything for him except one pebble. And if he just places the pebbles in the basin, this is also invalid for throwing must take place. Slaughtering an animal. This is the second action a person performs on the Eid day. So the Hajj slaughters his sacrificial animal if it is with him and eats from it and feeds the poor people or the masakeen. It is obligatory for one who is performing Hajj Tamattu' or Hajj Qiran to slaughter a sacrificial animal, but only recommended for one performing al -Ifrad. It is permissible to delay slaughtering until after the Eid day. Shaving and trimming the hair. It is the third action to perform on the day of Eid. Men shave their heads or cut their hair from all sides. But shaving is better. Females, however, only cut as much as an inch from the hair on their head. Tawaf al ifaba or the Tawaf of pouring forth. This is the fourth action one does on Eid day. It is called Tawaf ifaba or the visiting Tawaf. There is neither Raman, which is a rapid ritual walk for men, nor Ibtiba, which is having the right shoulder exposed during this Tawaf. After Tawaf, he goes to the Maqam Ibrahim, peace upon him, if it is easy for him, and he prays behind it two units of prayer. In the first unit of prayer, he reads Surah Al-Kafirun, after reading Surah Al-Fatiha, and in the second he reads Surah Al-Ikhlas. If it is not easy for him to pray behind the Maqam, he can pray anywhere. The best way to perform the Tawaf is to first take off his Ihram clothing after stoning and shaving, and wear his ordinary clothes and put on perfume. This is due to the report from Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, who said, I used to perform the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, when he was entering into the state of Ihram, and when he was leaving the state of Ihram, before making Tawaf of the house, meaning the Kaaba. The time for Tawaf al ifaba The time to perform this Tawaf begins after Fajr on the day of Eid, and it is acceptable to perform it before Fajr at the end of the eve of Eid for the weak who hasten from Muzdalifa. The Hajj may delay Tawaf to after the Eid day, but this disagrees with what is best. As Sa'i, Sa'i between Safa and Marwa. One who is performing Hajj at Tamattu' has to perform Sa'i between Safa and Marwa after making Tawaf Ifaba. But the one performing Ifrad al-Qiran, if he had performed Sa'i after performing the Tawaf al-Qudum, which is the Tawaf of arrival, then 
they do not have to perform sa'i after the tawaf ifada. When the hajj has finished performing tawaf ifada and sa'i, if he had to perform sa'i, he has finished all the actions of the day of Eid. So he has to return to Mina to stay there the eve of the 11th of the Hijjah. Arrangements of the actions of the Eid day. The Sunnah is to arrange the Eid day actions as follows. First, stoning. Then, slaughtering an animal. Following that is the shaving of one's hair. Then, tawaf. And lastly, sa'i, for those who have to perform sa'i. If, however, one action is performed before the other, it is still acceptable because the Prophet allowed that. If he thus shaves his hair first and then stones, it is acceptable. If he slaughters first and then makes tawaf and then stones, it is also acceptable and so on. Because the Prophet was asked about doing actions before others on this day and he replied, do that, meaning there is no harm in it. The first and the second phases of disengagement or release from the prohibitions of ihram. First, tahallul or leaving the state of ihram. The hajj is allowed to do all that he had been prohibited from doing due to the fact of him being in the state of ihram. Except having intercourse with his wife as well as any actions that might lead to that. And also arranging any marriage. These actions are not permissible for him. He is allowed to perform his first tahallul after doing any two of the following stoning jamarat al-aqaba, shaving his hair or having a haircut, or tawaf with sa'i for those who have to make sa'i. The second, tahallul. Everything that was prohibited for the hujjaj because of him being in a state of ihram is now allowed. The second tahallul takes place after doing all of the acts previously mentioned for the first tahallul. Slaughtering an animal has nothing to do with tahallul. Thus, if the hajj delays the sacrifice of his animal to the 11th day and performs the other actions of the Eid day, he could then perform tahallul even if he has not slaughtered an animal yet. At tashriq days. They are three days, the 11th, 12th and 13th of the month of the Hijjah. They are so named because sacrificial meat used to be dehydrated or to sharraq in these days that is cut, sliced, and dried in the sun. The Messenger of Allah said, Truly these days are days of eating, drinking, and the remembrance of Allah Almighty. The actions of a hajj during the days and nights of the tashriq days, the eve and day of the 11th of the hijjah. The hajj must stay overnight in Mina on the eve of the 11th. On the 11th day, after the sun moves from its meridian, the Hajj stones the three Jamarat, each one with seven pebbles. There are three basins. In each basin there is a pillar. They are in Mina, at the furthest point from Mecca. The first is the small Jamarat, then the central one, and then the largest one, which is called Jamratul Aqabah, and is on the border of Mina, nearest to Mecca. Method of stoning the Jamarat. The Hajj begins with the first Jamarat, he stones it with seven pebbles, one after the other, and makes takbir with each throw. The pebbles should all fall into the basin. Subsequently, the Hajj advances a little further and stands to supplicate to Allah with raised hands. Following that comes the central jamara. He stones that with seven pebbles as he had done with the first, and then supplicates with raised hands. Lastly, the jamara al aqaba he stones that with seven pebbles, but does not stop to supplicate here. The eve and day of the twelfth of the Hijjah. The Hajj must stay overnight in Mina on the eve of the twelfth. Subsequently, when the sun moves down from its meridian, he stones the three Jamarat exactly as he did on the eleventh day. If he wants to hasten to leave on this day, he stones and then leaves Mina before sunset. If the sun sets and he has not yet left Mina, he has to stay overnight and perform the stoning ritual again on the 13th day, which is a way to receive extra reward. Allah says, But whosoever hastens to leave in two days, there is no sin on him. And whosoever stays on, there is no sin on him, if his aim is to do good and obey Allah or fear him. This refers to one hastening and leaving after two days of the days of Tashriq, which are the 11th and 12th, or delaying to complete the 13th day. The eve and day of the 13th of the Hijjah 
after the sun moves down from its meridian on the 13th day, the Hajj stones the three Jamarat as previously performed on the 11th day. The time for stoning ends at sunset this day. It is permissible for the Hajj to delay the stoning of the Jamarat of one day to the next one, and to delay that to the last day since all the days of Tashriq are days for stoning Jamarat. If the Hajj delays stoning, he must perform his stoning for the Jamarat by first stoning the three Jamarat for the first day he delayed. He then returns to the smallest or the first Jamarat and stones it for the next day he delayed and so on. This he should do after the sun moves down from its meridian. Tawaf al-Wada' or the farewell to compilation. When the Hajj wants to leave Mecca, he should make Tawaf al-Wada' or the farewell to compilation which is one of the obligatory actions of Hajj. There is no sa'i after this tawaf. Women who have their menstruation or postpartum period must not perform tawaf al-wada'. Delaying the tawaf al to tawaf al-wada'. It is permissible for a Hajj to delay the tawaf of ifaba to the time of tawaf al-wada'. Though this is not according to the best opinion. It is acceptable for him to perform the tawaf al ifaba in place of tawaf al-wada' on condition that his niya is to perform tawaf al ifaba and it suffices him even if he performs sa'i after that. And with this he has finished his hajj and may Allah accept it.